it's time for book reviews! Hello everyone and welcome to Forkmaster's vlog for the Warhammer 4000 gaming system created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to my 217th book review of this vlog. Today I'm reviewing the short stories called Wolfen and Faith Spinner, both written by Chris Wraith. We can begin with the short story called Wolfen. Uh, so this has the same front cover as Blood of Asaheim and I felt that uh, I will not review this and I will save that for the actual novel when I get to that. Let's see what this story is all about. As Inquisitor, Damietta of the Order of Maleus interrogates the survivors of a doomed attack on the demon world of Void Soul, she realizes that the deeper mystery lies behind the events that occurred there. Defying her master's commands, she dwells into Sergeant Morbach's account and discovers a shocking secret about the nature of the Space Wolf chapter of the Space Marines. A secret that will change Damietta forever. So our main character is Inquisitor Damietta. She has been tasked with interrogating prisoners of the renegade Imperial Army Creed's Blade made out of former Cadian guardsmen that broke protocol and to land on a demon world they named Void Soul to battle the Ark enemy. It ended in disaster where most of them died and the survivors are broken by their experience and nightmares. It all takes a change for something different as she makes a contact with Sergeant Morbach, who despite everything seems to be quite aware of things and can still communicate. She finds her wounds on his upper shoulder and inside it she digs out a talon. His wound is festering with pus so it might be infected. She first talks with Sherardian General about the missing discovery upon their initial body checks and then reaches out to her superior Inquisitor Torquemada Cortias, who denies her time to make further investigation. She disobeys him and makes another visit to the Sergeant where she gets information that might lead her to some unknown allies that attack demons on Void Soul. Before she can act upon it, all the lights goes out. Something attacks the building and takes all the survivors from the demon world and no one else. Cotias is furious that something would manage to break into this fortress protected with hexagramic wards. Damietta fears that they might come for the prisoners who knows too much, very much like the situation she is in and it might be only a matter of time before they come for her next. So what do you think about this short story? Well, so this takes place during the Cadia outbreak at the dawn of the 13th Black Crusade as according to the old lore of the Eye of Terra. In that we saw the return of the famed 13th Great Company of the Space Wolves, the ones that had gone missing during the heresy together with the Primarch. In 2016 the lore would be updated and their return would also change, but I think both these versions can work together with each other. Despite the name and the front cover, this is more or less an Inquisitor story rather than a Space Wolf one. But it doesn't really matter because I enjoyed it very much, despite all that. The main character is interesting, I'm really invested in the procedural she conducts despite the fact that the mystery is quite obvious what it, it is. They don't even try and shy away from it. The bitter, saddening ending is also very true gothic horror in what you can guess will happen next. So I will give this short story an 8 out of 10 forks. We can end this with Fate Spinner and talk about its front cover. On the front cover we see a Thousand Sun Sorcerer, which I think is an older image from one of their older codexes. I think it's a cool image, but I think that the dimensions are a little bit off with the same of the scales, as the head look very much smaller than the rest of the body. But with that said, I think it looks really cool and I would give this one an 8 out of 10 forks, despite the fact that it's a reused image. Let's see what this story is all about. In the underhive depths of Rigo 5, the sorcerers Raman and Phaelius of the Thousand Suns seek prescribed knowledge. They are hunted, these witches, by the rune priest Forskir, who has tracked them across the length and breadth of the galaxy. At last, after an arduous search, Forskir has found where his prey it will be and means to end them. But the plans of those allied to the great architect of fate are not easy to unbind and the secret lurks beneath Rigo 5, one that had been long for the devising, a twist of fate and a plan so foul the worthy of Sench itself. So this short story has 2000 Sun sorcerers trying to unlock a secret on Rigo 5. Following close after them is a pack of space wolves led by the rune priest Forskir Hellsjorn. 
But as the reader will experience is that the narrative has an unreliable narrator, as when a pack arrives on a planet, it has been 12 years since the Thousand Suns had been there. Their leader sees a pendant hanging on an altar, he is hypnotized and reaches for it, and the moment he touches it, he removes the last untouched ward in the place and is possessed by a demon. In this new form, he would terrorize the planet for hundreds of years after that. Far away in the Eye of Terror, where Phalias is quite good mood after having been elevated to a full sorcerer. He is given the nickname Fate Spinner among some of the things. He wonders though why Raman left the last ward and how he knew the Space Wolf would break it. Then we have a flashback to Fenris where a mother with a small child is witnessing a child's slow death. Out from the storm comes a Space Marine that gives her a pendant to watch over the child with. He tells her to hang it over the crib for a child to look at and grow healthier from. He then learns that the child's name is Forskir Hellstjorm, named from the father. The mother on the other hand had another name intent for the child which is Washa. As we're told in Prospero Burns, knowing a true name is something that's truly powerful. So Ramon planted already during the child's infant years a fascination for pendants and when learning his true name, he could use it against him to control him and touch the ward that would release the demon. I bet there's a name for this child psychology about planting nostalgia or attachment to certain objects at an early age. So, what do you think about this short story? Well, I found it to be very connected with the previous Thousand Suns and Space Wolf stories uh, that has been written both in plot but also in theme. It was a really good short story and I highly recommend that you read it. I'll give this short story a 7 out of 10 forks and with that I will conclude this book review. Thank you very much for watching this book review. See you around everybody. Bye bye.